Now this is a pattern I'm going to be tying. Now this could be fished as a dry fly. In this case I've encouraged it to be a dry fly more than anything. But it can easily be fished as a wet. And this is why these this type of fly works so well. Especially in our locks. Uh, when your wild brown trout love flies like this. Now this is quite bright as you can see it's orange. It's uh, especially coloured water or peat, peat stained water. Uh, this will certainly show up really well. Now, the hook choice is up to yourself. I'm using this is a, uh, the Short Shrank Special from Full and Mill. In this, uh, this case, it's a size 12. Now, the style of the hook is the shank's equivalent to a size 14, but the, the gape is equivalent to a size 12. So, it suits these wee bushy type flies, ideal. Very good for muddlers and so on. And I like using it. You've probably seen me using it quite a lot. Now the thread I'm going to be using is the uni thread, it all in fire orange, which basically goes with the body and it highlights the colours that I'm using. First thing I do is go to wax it. So I'm going to put down a layer of thread all the way along to the point where we're just about to get around the bend and we can remove the waste. Now what I've got here is a bit kind of and I screwed up a wee bit, it's actually dried and that's a piece of road here that I dyed hot orange uh, as you can see and I've been using quite a lot of it now I'm not going to be fussy the way I tie this in I'm just going to build up uh, the hedgehog type wing it could be as dense as you like it could be as sparse as you like, it's up to you now, so the length I'm looking at for the, the first part I'm going to tie in basically as a tail you're looking round about the shank length, so I put that in my finger and thumb. I trim away, and it's not a lot here, and then tie it on. Now I cut it so that it's at least a couple of mil or so from where I'm tying it in, and let it go, keeping it quite reasonably stiff like that. Now I'm using the seals for it. this one here, this one's from F and F, this is just what they call their, their orange. It's a very fluorescent light, it's a nice colour. Uh, it's got that wee touch of, I would say, a peachy colour in towards it uh, because of the fluorescence. Now, I'm just going to lightly dub it on. Now, I'm going to use this for the body and then between each. It's a layer of deer. So, I'm going to tie this in. Now, basically, I'm just tightening it up. Pulling back anything going forward, and then I'm going to repeat the same. I'm going to tie in some of the deer hair. I'm just going to put a wee bit tad more. This is again the hot orange uh, row deer, and I want it to slightly taper so they hold that, trim away the excess, and again I'm going to tie this on. Now we got wax, it does help if you wax the thread, it gives a bit more grip. Make sure you tie in these cut ends. And then we tidy this up, and obviously we're making the body with the uh, seals for it, slide it up. And there we are. That when you're using a thread like I'm using a colour like this, you can. Um, what I'm actually doing is putting it on and then basically winding the thread through like a rib, and this tightens it up if I need to. And, there, and then again, some more of the orange. Just always trim it close to the skin when you're taking the hair off. And hold what you want in your finger and thumb. And it's much the same length, we're just heading up. Same length, but the shank length. Again, so there's a the cut ends there, and we just, I usually just take the thread turns into these cut ends. And uh, basically, tying over them down and coming back up. See how our shape's in. Looks, looks fine. Very hedgehog-like, hence its name. Don't say there's many hot orange or hedgehogs going around like, but it's kind of, if it was natural, it would look like a hedgehog. With small spines, anyway. 
and again we just tidy that up with a wee bit there here now I've got, basically this is just a dyed black it's not a roe deer, it's just a deer here that I didn't dye this, I actually bought this uh, so it's just a dyed black deer here now I'm going to stack this first thing we do is take out the broken ends and any underfur down the base we put in tip first into the stacker tap it on my desk just check the line, basically they've all lined up and remove them from the stacker now there is, as you can see, I don't know if you can see there quite hard to see, but there is a couple of broken ends and you can take them out just be careful they are thicker than the tips so you can grab them with your nail so there's our length, again we're going by the taper so we hold that with finger and thumb trim away the excess wax your thread now you see how much room I've got here, I've got at least the 2 mil plenty of room come on the top, pinch and loop onto the D here and then we're just going to as tight as you can this D here is a bit more tighter, a bit harder so you really got to make sure you hold it nice and tight and tie it tight then the wax thread gives you the grip now what I'm going to do here is put legs on it these are the pheasant tail legs and these, these are just pre-knotted pheasant tail legs now I'm going to only put Two either side, that's plenty for this size. Now what I'm doing is bring them out 90 degrees from the stem and they should line up the tips. The two either side of the the wing and body. So we just catch these in. Two three turns. Now what I'm doing here I'm looking down on the top, making sure that much this they should be the same length. When you're happy just trim away the excess wax on your thread you can tidy up now finish off with, this is just uh, basically some glister this is peacock glister, peacock black it's from Vineyards, Vineyards sell this it's just a, if you want you could use peacock kid on the head this is what this is representing, so we just build up the head, tidying it up don't be shy with it it's a very beetle like fly uh, it's an impression of a beetle, but it's a terrestrial uh, it gives impression of that anyway, and obviously it being bright uh, it certainly attracts, it's good, good in coloured water as I say and just make sure there's nothing going forward, a few turns in front and what finish and there we are and that's uh, that's the fly finished varnished and ready to go now I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to show you the box that I'm working on at the moment this is it here nearly, I'm getting there I've still got three rows to go just get that one there to put in uh, not this actual one I'm going to put in uh, ones I've tied, this one goes for the I give away at the end of the month, as you probably know. But anyway, there we go. There's a selection of type of flies that will work in any of our locks. And uh, these are dry flies. They're rough and ready dry flies. Are not. They're mainly representing it's a terrestrial midge, that type of thing. And uh, as you have a fish, the whole locks of Scotland, uh, and they're a bit rough and ready. These are the type of flies that work. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and again, if you enjoy the videos, uh, please subscribe, uh, it does help and thank you for watching.